morning, friends. Welcome to Roots and Shoots time for today. I'm really glad that you could join us. We have been looking at a couple different parts of scripture, kind of jumping around the Bible a little bit, but all kind of in the same area uh, as we approach the mystery of Easter. Um, there's a couple different books that describe these events, and they're all in the New Testament. So um, there's just a, you know, people, different people saw what happened and wrote about it in their way. So uh, as I stretch out these events and kind of poke at them and explore them in different ways, um, it is interesting to see the different themes that, that emerge. So let's have a quick word of prayer and then uh, we'll learn more about what story we're stepping into today together. So please close your eyes and focus your body for a minute. Calm your breathing. Maybe you can just center yourself for a minute and let's speak to our Father together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity for us to connect together this way. I know that this is a really different way of doing church and learning about your word and connecting with you. But thank you for meeting us and for knowing that we're just doing our very best right now. And I pray that you would please stretch your your arms and hold us all together so that we can feel like we are all part of this story with you. And um, if you do have anything you want to share with us in particular, please help our hearts and our minds and our ears and our eyes to be open. And thank you for sending your son to be with us and kicking off this whole chain of events that changed everything for us. And uh, help us to be in the right mindset for that today. Amen. So um, we've been approaching Jerusalem together to mark um, the Passover time. And this is uh, a celebration that was very, very important to the Jewish people um, back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, back when, you know, Jesus was walking on the earth. Uh, and it's actually still a really important time for the Jewish people today. And it's actually um, pretty consistent. There's not a lot of changes to these traditions and these special celebrations. Um, this is really, a, a, you know, they, they know how they wanted, wanted to do it and um, marking how Moses led the people to freedom through the waters. So as we step into our story time today, we are getting closer to Easter. So today we are looking at that Passover time. We're looking at um, that festival uh, time to, that they spent together. So I want your mindset to be one of stepping into celebration and um, feasting and, you know, partying and family time, but also steeped in tradition and structure. This was all done the same way year after year. So when Jesus um, kind of stepped into uh, Jerusalem for this Passover time, things changed and it was it's really interesting once you know that to um, to see exactly how they changed. So we're here, we're in Jerusalem together. We're going to learn today about some of Jesus' last moments spent in celebration and worship and, and wonderful times with his disciples. We are in the season of Lent. Lent is the time when we spend time drawing close to God in preparation of the mystery of Easter. Every year, the people of God would go up to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. They do this to remember how God led them through the waters to freedom. Every year, Jesus celebrated Passover with his family and his friends in Jerusalem. And this year, as they entered the city, people had laid down their cloaks and palm leaves on the road. As Jesus rode by on the donkey, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They wanted a king. They wanted a strong and mighty king who would lift them out of oppression and defeat their enemies for them. They wanted a warrior king like David had been. But that's not the kind of king that they were going to get.
This year, Jesus and his friends entered Jerusalem, and they went to the place where they were going to stay. And they spent time together with their family and their friends, and they participated in the different ceremonies and traditions that make this such a special time for their people. And on one night, they prepared for a feast, as usual. And they got everything all set up, just as they usually would be ready to spend time together, draw close to each other, remember about how Moses had brought them through the waters to freedom. Just share food together, be near one another. And everything was as it usually was, except Jesus did something different. After they ate together, he stood up and he said some words that they had never heard before. With both of his hands, he took some bread and he lifted it up and he blessed it. And as he did this, he said to them, this is my body. Take it and eat it because it is for you. And then he took the cup from the table. And again, he took it and he blessed it. And then he held it up to them and he said, this is my blood. Take it, drink it, because it is for you. They all shared together this special table. And they ate and they drank together and then they sang a worship song praising God together. And then Jesus told them, this is the night. This is it. This is when I will be arrested and soon I will be killed. And he asked them, will you please come outside with me? Come to the Garden of Gethsemane, a beautiful place. Come and pray with me. So a few of them went with Jesus. He wanted them to watch over him as he prayed and to pray with him too. Jesus said, my heart is deeply grieved. His prayer was very important. He, he wanted to spend time with God because he knew what was coming and he didn't want to miss out on this chance to say these words that were in his heart to his father. So he knelt in the garden under the beautiful trees, a little bit away from his disciples who were very sleepy and had a hard time staying awake. And he cried out to God. He said, my father, if this cup may pass from me without me drinking from it, please let it be so. Your will be done. And Jesus knew what was coming his way. He knew that this was going to be so, so hard and that he would die. Please, Jesus is asking God. Please change my future if you can. Does it really have to be this way? If it does, I will accept it. But I just have to ask. Jesus didn't want his life to end this way, but he also knew that this was all part of God's plan and that things were going to unfold the way that they had to. And soon after Jesus was done praying, 
a crowd came. The people who did not love him, who did not see him as the son of God. And he was arrested and he was brought to face trial. There's a lot going on there. I think it's really a good time to spend some time in wondering together. And remember that there's no right or wrong answers here. This is a time to stretch out and explore some of these concepts and words and thoughts. So take your time, pause in between my questions if that helps you, and let's spend some time in wondering together. So with all those things in mind, I wonder if the disciples were afraid walking into Jerusalem for the Passover time that year. I wonder what it was like eating that bread and drinking from that cup after it had been blessed like that. I wonder if you have ever seen a table like that one. I wonder if Jesus meant that that bread and that cup were for us too. I wonder why Jesus chose to go outside and pray in the garden. I wonder if Jesus will face a fair trial. So um, it's time to move into some creative response time now. So this is a time for you to think about what you've learned, think about what you've um, heard today in the story time and maybe something that got brought up in the questions maybe in the questioning time or it could be something that was already on your heart and already on your mind from your life. You know, we have a lot of things going on in our world right now too that some of which can be concerning and hard to understand. So take some time, um, center yourself, open your eyes, heart and your ears and just see if you have anything that comes out um, this is often really done easily artistically maybe not easily but it's often done artistically and that can be through coloring or painting or um, you know drawing on paper or using clay or play-doh uh, it can be something more physical like lego or blocks or building something maybe you have some lincoln logs you like to pull out um, there's lots of things you can do. Maybe you'd like to do some baking and shape some dough into some kind of shape. <laughs> Maybe you would like to go outside and connect in nature like Jesus did. He went out to the garden, right? Maybe you would like to go outside and spend some time connecting with your Heavenly Father that way. So however you do it, um, we would love to connect with you and find out how you're doing. So please feel free to post in the Grassroots Facebook page or to send me a message and let me know how you're doing. I hope you're uh, feeling seen right now. And even though we're in shutdown, please remember that there are brighter days ahead and this is not permanent. This is temporary and we will all be able to connect together again. And it's just a matter of time. You know, we just got to put one foot in front of the other. Um, it's okay to acknowledge that this is hard. These are lonely sometimes days or sometimes difficult days. It's okay to say that. But you know what, guys? We can do hard things. We can. And we have God with us. And you have everybody else in your church family with you too. So you might feel kind of lonely, but you're actually, you're not alone. And there's lots of people feeling that way. So it's not just you. So hang in there. And I really pray that you are seen and connected with this week and that we will be able to get together again soon. So um, have a great week and I hope that this bright, sunny, springy weather comes back soon and treats us well. We'll see you next time as we um, learn about Jesus's very last night as he faces trial and faces the cross in the morning.